Okay, we said in our previous segment that uh, weathering will turn rock into sediments. So there are two kinds of weathering. You've got physical weathering and chemical weathering. So let's talk about physical weathering first. Uh, in physical weathering, it's going to be processes that break up a rock but do not change the identity of it. So that if you start with granite, after it weathers, you still have granite. It's just you've got littler pieces of granite. So it hasn't actually changed the identity of the rock. So what are some examples of physical weathering? Well, the first one is going to be called unloading. And so this is a reduction in pressure. So as long as rocks have the weight of other rocks on top of them pushing down, that helps to keep that rock compact. Okay, but as uh, weathering occurs and it erodes the surface of the land, then that means that those rocks, which used to be buried down here, are coming closer to the surface and the pressure on them is being reduced. And so as that pressure is being reduced, then what happens is the rock can expand and it gets cracks in it. So you can think of this as kind of like a spring. So if you've got a spring and you compress it, well, as long as you're pushing down on that spring, it stays a certain size. But if you release the pressure on it, then the spring expands and rocks will do the same thing. And so you can see here's an example of where rocks have peeled off like an onion from the surface of, of uh, this rock outcrop and then have slid down the, the, the slope down to the bottom of it. Okay, here's another kind of physical weathering, and this is going to be called frost wedging, and this is repeated expansion of ice. So why does ice expand? Okay, so ice is composed of water, and water is H2O. So let me, excuse me, and so let's show a water molecule. So it's got the oxygen and it's got the hydrogens, like that. And we said that it's a polar molecule. And so in the liquid phase what, of water, what you have is clumps of these things, but they don't have any real structure to them. Now, as we reduce the temperature, what's going to happen is they're going to start to align themselves so that the oxygen up here will be attracted to another hydrogen. So let's say that it's going to be a situation like this where uh, this hydrogen or oxygen is going to be attached to another one kind of like that. So this oxygen is going to be attracted to this end of this water molecule up here. And it will turn out that this will make a hexagon. So once all of these water molecules lock together, then you end up with a shape in that picture there that makes a hexagon. And you notice that there is a space between the water molecules. Now, it, it's not filled with anything, so it's, it's empty. But the point is that now, when it's in the form of water, it has expanded. It has more space. So now imagine that water gets into the crack of a rock and then at night it freezes and when it freezes it expands and so it's going to make that crack a little bit bigger. Okay, then during the daytime what can happen is that ice could change back into water. The water could get a little bit deeper into the crack and then at night or during the daytime it freezes again and then that water changes into ice and it expands and cracks it open a little bit more. So given enough time, uh, this process of water freezing can break apart a rock or pavement. So uh, here in, in Missouri, we have just the right conditions of water and then freezing at night and then during the daytime thawing that in the springtime, all of our roads 
have these big potholes in them as a result of this process and then the highway department has to come along and then put asphalt in all those holes. So this is an example of frost wedging. It's not going to change the identity of the rock, but it is going to make the rock smaller. All right, let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk about another kind of physical weathering.